Next thing we're going to discuss is adding and subtracting rational expressions. To add and subtract rational expressions, it's just like adding and subtracting fractions. You need to have a common denominator in order to add or subtract them. So our first step is going to be finding the common denominator, turning all of our rational expressions into equivalent expressions that have the common denominator, adding and subtracting, and then simplifying. So easiest way to show this is with examples. So the first one is 3 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus x plus 3 over x minus 1 times x plus 1. So this first example, I'm giving it to you that's in factored form already. And what I want to do is I want to find the lowest common denominator between x minus 1, x, x minus 1, and x plus 1. So what I want to do is I want to write the power, the lowest power that each factor is appearing in here. Okay. Um, actually, I want the highest power that each factor is appearing. So I have an x minus 1, and the highest power that x minus 1 appears in any of my problems is to the first power. Okay, that took care of that one and that one. Then I have an x. Okay, it appears to the first power. That's the highest power. And then I have an x plus 1. So in order to find the LCD, you want to find the highest power of each factor in your denominators, in your denominator polynomials. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to multiply each one of these rational expressions by whatever I need to do to get this lowest common denominator. So what I do is I look at what's missing. Well, I've got an x minus 1. So to get that other stuff, I need to multiply times x and x plus 1. So I'm going to do x times x plus 1 over x times x plus 1. Here I have the x, so I need to multiply by that part. So that'll be x plus 1 times x minus 1. And for multiplication purposes, I know that's a pattern. That's going to be x squared minus 1 on the top. Those two are the same. And here I'm missing the x. So I need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by an x. I am going to leave my denominator in this form, in the factored form. But I do have to multiply each set of the numerators so I can do the addition or subtraction that's in there. And then combine like terms, factor if at all possible to see if any of these things are going to cancel out. Okay, So I've got 3x times x is going to be 3x squared. So this is equal to 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x minus 2x squared minus 2 times negative 1, which would be plus 2. x times x would be plus x squared. x times 3 would be plus 3x. And again, I have x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now I combine like terms. 3x squared minus 2x squared is 1x squared, plus one more x squared would be 2x squared. And I'm going to check off the ones that I already used. So that's gone, that's gone, and that's gone. For x's, I've got 3x plus 3x, which is 6x. So I use those, and I have a 2 over my denominator, x plus 1, 
x minus 1. Factor out the 2, and that leaves me with x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. And I look here. Is there any way to factor this one here? Two numbers that multiply to 1 that add to 3. No way for me to come up with quick factors, to, so nothing else is going to cancel. And that would be my final answer to the this addition slash subtraction problem. So again, you want to factor the denominators. You want to write the highest power of each factor of the denominators as your LCD. You multiply by what's missing. Okay, Leave the denominator in factored form. Combine like terms in the numerator. Factor the numerator. See if anything cancels. And then write your final answer. I'm going to do two more examples. Again, the hardest part of this is finding the LCD. And to find the LCD, you need to be able to factor these, the polynomial portions. So next example, 4 over x minus x plus 5 over x squared minus 4 plus 4 over 2x. So my LCD, so this is, I'm going to show you the way that I do the work, okay? The LCD has got, I'm going to write the factors of each of these things. I have an X, I have an X plus 2, I have an X minus 2 from that one, and I have a 2, and I have an X. So the LCD is going to have an X then the x plus 2, x minus 2, and a 2. Okay. So my LCD has the 2, x to the first, x plus 2, times x minus 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what is missing for my multiplication of my numerator and denominator. So the 4 over x stays the same. Well, what's missing? Well, I have the x. I'm missing 2 times this. And remember, that that's x squared minus 4. So 2 times that would be 4x. That would be 2x squared minus 8. Okay? I do that simple multiplication in my head so I can save um, work. Okay? And I'm also going to be dividing by that. For that term. Okay? Then I'm going to subtract x plus 5 over x squared minus 4. Well, what am I missing here? Well, that's my x squared minus 4. I'm missing the 2x, so I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2x. And then the last one, I have plus 4 over 2x. What am I missing? I'm missing the x plus 2 times x minus 2, which we know is x squared minus 4. And I have to do that to the numerator and the denominator. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply out the numerators, so I can end up combining like terms when I get done. So first one, 4 times 2x squared is 8x squared. 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times 5 is minus 10x. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Keep the denominator in factored form. 
Next thing I want to do is I need to combine like terms. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. I have 10x squared. Minus 10x. Negative 32 minus 16 is negative 48 over 2x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now I want to factor the numerator. So let's factor the numerator. Greatest common factor in 10, negative 10 and negative 48 is 2. And that leaves me with 5x squared minus... 5x minus 24 over 2x, x plus 2, x minus 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out the 2s, and I'm going to try to factor the rest of the numerator um, to see if I can come up, well, the factor by grouping, what we were doing is we were coming up with two numbers that multiplied by the first times the last. 5 times negative 24 is going to be negative 120. The two numbers that multiply to negative 120 that add to negative 5. So 120, um, what are my factors of 120? Well, they're going to have opposite signs with the biggest one negative. So I have a plus and a minus. So 1 and 120. 2 and 60. 3 and 40. 4 and 30. None of those are getting me close. So if this is positive and that's negative, I'm not close yet. So 5 and 24. That would be negative 19. 6 and 20. That would be negative 14. 7 does not go in there. Um, 8. 8 goes in there 15 times. Um, 9 does not go in there. 10 goes in there 12 times. Those are all of my factors of 120. And if you look here, I got negative 119, negative 58, negative 37 negative 26, negative 19, negative 14, negative 7, and negative 2 by doing the addition. There are none of them that add to negative 5, so I know that that one cannot factor. Okay? If you cannot come up with the factors right on the top of your head, go ahead and list, list all your factor pairs Okay, to see if you can come up with one of those. So my final answer for this one is going to be 5x squared minus 5x, minus 24, over x plus 2, times x minus 2. Okay, I'm going to show you another way, without having to write out all these factors, to be able to tell whether you're going to be able to come up with a common factor. And you should remember this from your quadratic equation, which was x equals negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it like this. So I have a fraction plus or minus something with a root that gives me a fraction. If this part underneath here is a perfect square, then I'm going to be able to come up and be able to factor it. So what you want to do is you can check the discriminant and if the discriminant is a perfect square, then you know you're going to be able to factor it. You won't have to write out this list of factor pairs. So let's see if the discriminant is a perfect square. So b squared, which would be 25, minus 4 times 5, which would be negative 20, and negative 20 times negative 24 is going to be a plus 0, 8, 
4, which would be 505, and 505 is not a perfect square. So therefore, I didn't have to do all this work if I checked the discriminant. So I showed you two different ways to figure out if you can factor that messy looking quadratic. And this is the final answer. One more example. And we will be done with adding and subtracting rational expressions. OK. So again, our steps are to factor the denominator, find the highest power of each factor that appears in the denominators, and then um, multiply by our compensating term to come up with the LCD, um, multiply the numerators, factor, and simplify if at all possible. So I have 1 over x squared minus x minus 2 minus x over x squared minus 5x plus 6. Factor the denominators. x squared minus x minus 2, two numbers that multiply to negative 2 that add to negative 1 would be negative 2 and a positive 1. A negative 2 and a positive 1. Minus, I'm going to leave a blank here, x over two numbers that multiply to 6 that add to negative 5 would be negative 2 and negative 3. x minus 2 times x minus 3. My LCD is going to have the lowest power, I mean the highest power of each factor that appears in my denominators. So I'm going to have an x minus 2. And the highest power it appears is to the first. I'm going to have an x plus 1 and an x minus 3. Then I multiply each of my rational expressions by what is missing to form the LCD. So I am missing the x minus 3. So I multiply numerator and denominator of the left hand portion by x minus 3. On this right hand one, I'm missing x plus 1. So I multiply numerator and denominator times x plus 1. I now do the multiplication that's shown here. I've got 1 times x minus 3, which is just x minus 3. Minus x times x is minus x squared. Minus x times 1 would be minus x. Combine like terms. I have a negative x squared. x minus x is 0. Then I have a minus 3 over x minus 2, x plus 1, x minus 3. This looks messy because I got two negatives, so I'm going to pull that negative out and write it as x squared plus 3 which I know does not factor in the real number system. And that would be how I would write my final answer. So again, the LCD is going to be the highest power that each factor appears. And like the past several videos I've stated, the hardest part here is going to be factoring your polynomials so that you can actually determine what the LCD is going to be.